Hi, thank you for joining us and welcome to Cleveland Clinic's Culinary Medicine Teaching Kitchen here at the Wellness Institute. I'm your host, Nara Youssef, and today, as always, we have the very talented chef <laughs> Jim Perko and his awesome sous chef, Gabby Shipta. And with St. Patrick's Day around the corner, we are offering you a healthy shamrock shake, aka green smoothie. So we're not going to have any artificial flavors, no dairy, no corn syrup, or any kind of syrup. And then we'll also demonstrate how to make a creamy sweet potato hummus. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Do you guys want to start with the hummus? Yep. Okay. We'll do the hummus Great. first. Great. So, okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do, you can make hummus out of anything you want, out of any type of legume. There's no rules. It's traditionally with sure. chickpeas, right? But you could use any kind of legume that you want to make a hummus. This is one that we do for Dr. Esselstyn's program. So Dr. Esselstyn does a zero-fat plant-based diet for his patients. Mm -hmm. And so during a, for a snack that they would have when he does his program, you know, we give them this, all right? Uh, so, but it's not just a hummus. This could be a spread for a sandwich instead of mayonnaise, sure. right? Uh, if you want to add more protein to it, you could take a roasted red pepper chickpea hummus that you could buy mm -hmm. and just combine it with that if you want to. But here's how we make it, all right? So first thing we did, we got sweet potatoes, right? Now you want to take the sweet potatoes and you really want to bake them in the oven rather than boil them because they're going to be much more flavorful, right? They're more flavorful. If, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you go to boil them, then it won't be as much flavor. One time. It really hit home for us because we do shared medical appointments here, part of which we teach knife skills. And I'll let people cut and chop things to teach them how to hold a knife and sure. dice, right? And so we had, we needed some sweet potato hummus and I thought, well, at least if I let them do sweet potatoes, right? You know, I could use the leftovers sure. and I won't waste it, right? And then we'll make the hummus out of it. And uh, man, even Gabby says, wow, this hummus just don't taste as good. You know, so you, those little things really make a difference. So rather than boiling the sweet potato, you'd want to bake it, okay? The other thing is you want to, if you can, and this is the confusing part, use a real sweet potato. And it's hard to what find in a What do you mean by real versus uh, not real? Versus a yam. A yam. Because when you go to the grocery store, they're interchangeable in this country. Sure. No matter where you go and almost every store that you go to find, they're all yams, but they'll call them sweet potatoes, right? right? Yes. right. Now, the difference being is, and they're different botanically, but from a nutritional standpoint, there's no carotenes in yams. They're in sweet potatoes, okay? Oh, yeah, and so that's the big difference, and that converts to vitamin A. So that's why we want to have that. So sweet potatoes are good. Okay. So how many, how many sweet potatoes are, are in here? Okay, so we have 15 ounces. 15 ounces. Yep. So okay. like two or three, depending on size? Uh, probably two medium-sized sweet potatoes. Okay. Okay. And then if you scrub them really, really well, the skins are still good. So you could have the skins for something else, right? You know, like you, what? What, do you, what would you use the skin for? Well, I'll just eat them plain. But you could take oh. those skins and stuff it with this and some vegetables. Oh. And have, or roll it up, you know? Yeah. And so like a little roulade? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we got the sweet potatoes. <clears throat> now, you could take a real pepper if you wanted to roast. I mean, well, they're, they're, this is a real pepper, but a fresh one and roast it. These came from a can. Okay, so they're roasted red peppers right. from a can. Okay. And then we just scrape off the black a lot of times because you don't want to have the black. Sure. And there's carcinogens associated with that anyhow, so you don't want to do that. So sure. anytime you burn or char anything, you have carcinogens associated with that. But the, if you do a chili to peel it, right, sure. it'll give it more, like roast it on top of the stove. It'll have more flavor. But then also you scrape that off so you get rid of those carcinogens. Okay. Okay. Now we have some fresh cumin, all right. We just have a small amount of salt. And if you're, you know, really trying to watch the sodium, you can omit that entirely. A little bit of cayenne. We got some fresh garlic, okay. And then lastly, a little bit of lemon juice. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. And this is really, really good. So you'll see. Okay. Okay. So now we'll stop it a little bit. Just scrape the sides of the bowl. Okay. Look at that bright orange color. So, you know, when you eat, 
foods, you want to eat the rainbow, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Nice and bright orange. Oh, is. yeah. It's beautiful. And can you imagine when you put this on a table or a snack and you have different, you know, Green greens and, and other yes. food? Yes. Oh, yeah. It just looks healthy. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And it is. And there is no oil, or any no fat added in fat in mm -hmm. here, right? No added fat, no added oil. Now, if you go to add a roasted red pepper hummus, you can buy them now without tahini. Okay. So if you put tahini in it, then you'll be adding fat. If you have it without the tahini, you won't have any fat, right? Tahini is a good kind of fat, is it not? Oh yeah, tahini is good, but still, fat's fat, right? No, yeah. 120 calories a tablespoon, right? Sure, I see. So, wow. even if you have healthy fats. Sure. So, for someone that's going to take bread and dip it in olive oil, which will probably absorb more than a tablespoon, and nine times out of ten, they're probably not dipping 100% whole grain bread. It's right. probably chapata or something like that. Sure. And when they do that, they dip it in, you're getting 120 calories, not counting the calories in the bread, probably in every dip. Every bite? You know, wow. or every dip. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. However many bites it takes. Okay, <laughs> so now, look at this. Look, it comes out, and the consistency is beautiful. All right, so you could see what we have here. And this is wow. great as just, so these are 100% whole wheat pita chips. You could use a gluten-free chip. But this is a great item to have, just like this here. Sure. Okay. And uh, again, though, if you wanted to spread this, right, on a sandwich mm. or a tortilla, look at the consistency you have. So it makes a great spread for a sandwich or for a wrap to take to as a bagged lunch item. Sure. Right? You know? It's great for dipping in dipping vegetables. Dipping vegetables. Yes. Absolutely. Just it's like amazing. You, would... you know what? And the cumin just did it for me because I love cumin. And oh, this yeah. tastes amazing with the lemon juice. And, and you could garnish good. it. If you have, you know, if you're entertaining, you could put some fresh parsley on it. And you've got a great thing there that'll love you back. Wow. Okay? That's amazing. Oh, and yeah. I just want to remind awesome. our viewers that we are live. So if you guys have any questions or comments, I'm checking them here as we go along. I know some people are actually logging in from Dubai and Houston. So um, welcome, everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and for the recipe, uh, Nancy just asked about the recipe. We are going to be putting links of the full recipe online as well. Okay, so um, let's move on to the shamrock okay. shake. I don't want our viewers to get mad at us because it is really just a green yeah. smoothie and not really a shamrock shake, but um, that's our that's well, version of it. Well, that's okay. Um, a lot of times what you call it, there's a purpose to that. Sure. So. Uh, some years back, probably four or five years ago, we did this for the Cleveland School District, mm -hmm. right? Uh, to try to, you know, put some healthy items for the, for the kids in school because a lot of the foods that they have are previously prepared and they re-thermalize sure. them in the oven. They don't have people cooking in kitchens in Cleveland schools, right? So actually, you know, we were able to get in there. They, the, they had an electrical outlet in the wall. We were able to go in there with a blender and create some things, and this is one of them, but for kids, I couldn't call it a green smoothie, right? Uh -huh. No. Call it a Hulk shake, shamrock shake, <laughs> Shrek shake, something, shake. but not a green smoothie, yeah, right? Definitely. Okay. Now, if you're going to make a smoothie, and you can make a smoothie out of anything, but I'm going to tell you what I think the rules should be. Here okay. would be my rules in making this, okay? So when, and this is a true story, everybody, we went to the Cleveland schools, right? And we had four, little four-ounce containers that were pre-poured. They had 300 pre-poured when I got there. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, did demos on this. We did pilots, everything, and so they knew what to do, right? So I get there, and I taste one because I taste everything. Sure. It was god-awful. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it was the <laughs> recipe I gave them for the green smoothie. Really? It was and, your recipe? And my recipe. And it was god-awful. And these are food service professionals, wow. okay? Now... I went to look to see what they did. I was going to let them well, serve it with the kids. Yeah. So when I found out what they did, and I'll tell you what they did wrong, I made them throw all those away. We went to the store and bought all new stuff and did it again. Because wow. if this kid doesn't like it and he makes a frown and that kid I'll sees him frown, he's not even going to try exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Here's what they did wrong and here's what you got to do. The first thing they did wrong, the banana wasn't ripe. It was green. You can't that makes have a that. Huge difference. Now, this banana is really ripe. You could tell just by looking at it. 
Okay, yeah. Gabby already it. has it. She has it pre-peeled for me for yes. the interest of time here. Sure. But it was a ripe banana. You can't have a green banana. Right. Okay. Right. The second thing they did, the pear wasn't ripe. See how this pear is yellow? Sure. Yeah. The pear was green. Now, on the subject of a pear, see how this pear still hasn't turned brown? Yes. You know why? Because there's pineapple juice in there. Now, when you, if you take a pear or an apple, it'll turn brown because it oxidizes, right? If you put it in acidulated water like lemon juice or something, and lemon juice is actually really strong, it, you know, flavor-wise, you can taste flavor. it. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's not nowhere near as strong to prevent something from turning brown as pineapple juice because the enzymes in pineapple juice are bromate. And bro, if you took a fresh piece of pineapple and put it in your tongue to eat it and mm. you held it there for a while, it, your tongue will zing, right? Yes. yes. Exactly. If you put it on your skin, you'll yeah. get a rash. Wow. The enzymes in pineapple are so powerful. And if you go to dip this, it'll stay. You could keep this for three days. It won't turn brown. Wow. I even, when I go to make guacamole, I'll just give my avocado a switch because it helps keep the guac from turning brown. That's very interesting because oh, I usually add lemon because I, I thought the acidity would do it, but I Nowhere have no idea. Nowhere near as powerful as pineapple juice. Yeah. Bromate is so powerful. Okay. That's awesome. So now you want a ripe pear, right? Are you going to put the actual juice in there? Or do you no, no, okay. no. I just did it to keep the to pear keep from turning nice brown, okay? okay? Or actually, Gabby did it to keep the <laughs> pear from turning <laughs> yeah, brown. Chef to All right, <laughs> that's right. Okay. The other thing they did wrong was they bought institutional packs of um, spinach and kale. And you know oh. what happens when greens get wet in the bag? They oh, have that funky taste. Well, brown. that got infused into the smoothie. Oh. Okay, so you want to make sure your kale is nice and fresh. Fresh and dry. There's a saying in the Kalne world: "Good in will help you get good out." Yes. Right. Yes. So if you start with good, you handle it right, then your chances of a good outcome are much better. And okay? every ingredient yeah. counts. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Okay. So we got fresh kale. Same thing with the spinach. We got fresh spinach. Okay. All right. Now we got green grapes, fresh. The orange, we peeled it. Here's why, okay? If any, did you ever have a glass of fresh orange juice that tasted bitter, fresh yes, juice all day? You know why? Because what happens is when they squeezed into the orange, they got into the pit. Mm -hmm. If you just taste the pit on anything by itself, it's bitter. It's not bad for you. Yeah. I mean, there's actually benefits to it. But if you want to make something sweet without adding sugar to it, this is going to give you a bit of a challenge because you're adding bitterness to it. Yeah. For a child, sure. they might think it's not as sweet, right. Right? right? So you need ripe fruit, you need fresh greens, mm -hmm. and if you peel the pith off the orange, you won't have the bitterness. And the pit is that layer, that white layer between the actual right. peel and the actual orange? Yes. Okay. Now the other thing is we're going to add chia seed. Okay. Chia. Oh, okay. I thought that chia was black seed. pepper. Okay. Okay. Now, Tell me about chia seeds. Tell me about the benefits. The chia seed is really, really important because... Fiber? It, well, mostly it's because it's a healthy fat and protein. Okay. So it's high omega-3. And there's a lot of nutrients. There's calcium and magnesium. There's a lot of nutrients in chia seed. But mostly why we're doing this is because the fat and the protein. Here's why. Okay. Um, we do a lot of stuff for Dr. Esselstyn and his patients, and, and this was actually Dr. Esselstyn's saying, sure. okay? It's always better to chew your orange than drink it, right? Here's why. So if I do something with a physician, and I do a lot of them around here, and they got a patient going, whose blood sugar dropped, they were like hypoglycemic, right? And then all of a sudden they'll say, Jim, you got any OJ? I'll go get an orange, I'll squeeze it, and I'll run it up to the physician, give, they give it to the patient, the patient drinks it, their blood sugar spikes. Wow. They start to feel better, yes. right? Sugars absorb quickly, right? Yeah. There's a lot of naturally occurring sugars in here, and we're not designed just to swallow sugar, okay? Right. So even though I'm not adding any, there's sugars so in, in there. all those fruit and plants. Sure, the grapes. Right? Naturally yeah. occurring. And the banana especially yeah. is really high in sugar, right? Yes. So adding fat and protein take longer to absorb into our blood. So by adding the chia seed to this, the source of fat and protein, it makes these sugars a little less glycemic and it's a little bit more like chewing your orange Tolerable. than drinking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's really important to add that Very to that. Very interesting, I have no idea. Now we're gonna add some ice, okay. We're just gonna add a little bit of water just to get it going, not much. Okay. 
All right, that's it. Now you'll hear some noise. Yep. Okay. And we'll start slow. Okay. Just to get it going. We'll ramp it up. Okay, now we're good. All right. Chef, Mindy um, asked me on Facebook, what is the visible difference between a yam and a sweet potato? If you don't see the label anywhere, is yeah. there a way you can tell? So, you know, that is really tough, but generally all sweet potatoes will have a tapered end, okay? Yams could be totally round. So, in both sweet potatoes, you get white pale ones and you have the dark orange ones as well. Mm -hmm. and, but always a sweet potato will have a tapered end. And also the skins on a real sweet potato are not as coarse, they're more smoother, where okay. yams could have a coarser skin. Okay. Um, but other than that, it's really difficult. You could go into a store, and here's what makes it really crazy. You'll see sweet potatoes on the sign in the store. People think they're buying a sweet potato, right? right? right. But then you actually go to pick up the tuber, and there's a little tag on it that'll say yam. Wow. You know, so it's really confusing. So it's kind so, of labeled. You know, it, sometimes it makes sense to, before you go, call the grocer up and say, do you have genuine sweet potatoes there before you make the trip? Okay. Genuine sweet potatoes. You know, if you're looking for them. Sure. All right. Okay. Wait, I have one more question yes. for you before we go. Absolutely. Uh, Nancy, do chia seeds have to be ground to get nutrients? No. Or could you swallow Absolutely. them whole? Chia seeds are not like flax seeds. Flax seeds, you'd want to grind them to get the nutrients don't have to do that with chia seeds. Okay. Chia seeds will swell up to 10 times their weight and volume in liquid. So if you put chia, maybe one day we should do a Facebook Live and we'll do stuff with chia seed and show how it oh, swells yeah. and absorbs. Oh yeah, what else we can do with chia seeds? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. chia seed's really good. Uh, but not, well, because it will swell, right, you can make, it's a substitute sometimes when you want to make some as a thickening agent, right? Sure, sure. It'll add density, it'll add viscosity, just like they make flax eggs, right? Right. And you can actually take chia seed and flax seed and combine the two together and put them in things. Right. I'll, I'll put that on my cereal. I'll do chia seed and flax seed when I have cereal in yeah, them. Yeah, a lot of people put in yogurt okay. Oh yeah, it'll things. congeal. Yeah. The thing what you do want to do is you want to make sure it is. Let's say you have cereal, right? And you put the chia seed, you sprinkle it on your cereal and flax seed, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to eat it, whether you use soy milk or something, you know, alternative milk or whatever you put in there. But when you get done eating it, you'll see residual that'll stick to the bowl of the flax and chia seed. Oh. Don't rinse that out down your sink and you don't want to do that. Because there's someone it? that has to, you know, snake out a drain every now and then <laughs> yes, you know, hair in the wash tub <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, right? You don't want to do that. It'll make it harder for you. So you just take you know, a paper towel, wet it and scoop anything that's stuck to the side and oh, pitch okay. it and then wash your cereal bowl. You don't want to put that because that stuff gets sticky, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I, don't I, put it down your drain, yeah, all right? I love his tips. It's not just you don't cooking do that. dishes. It's how to oh, really yeah. be efficient okay. all the way around. Yes. Great. All right. Now, when you go to buy these things, sometimes they got that funky army green color. It's not pretty like your blouse, Thank you. right? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this pretty green. Wow. Huh? Is that nice? Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. There you go. Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And then we have to give one to oh, wait, Brandon, we'll do we'll do who's we'll do videoing all this, right? This will be for all Brandon. Right. Great. Okay. Can't yeah. forget about the videographer behind the camera. So this is a way you can have a green drink for St. Patrick's Day that'll be healthy. So the best of health, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Cheers. And make it a healthy one that will love you back, right? 
Thank you. Thank You're you so, so much. Welcome. And that's all the time that we have for today. And make sure you join us next Tuesday. We're going to go live for another hour special with Dr. Mark Hyman, Director of Functional Medicine here at Cleveland Clinic. And for more health tips and information, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Cleveland Clinic, one word. Can we'll I see say you again one next more thing? Time. Yeah, go ahead. You know what I want to tell everybody is that a lot of times for those that don't want to do dairy and milk, mm -hmm. you know, because the milk board is really powerful. Sure. And you'll go in schools and you'll see posters of athletes and Miley Cyrus and all this yes. stuff with a <laughs> white mustache that says body by milk, mm. right? I would think it'd be so cool to get green some mustache. people with a green mustache and say out. body by plant. <laughs> there it is. Because you get so many much more benefits. Definitely. Um, as much calcium in a cup of that kale as a glass of milk, yet you get 20,900 micrograms of lutein, good for your eyes. It's soluble and soluble, uh, uh, insoluble and soluble fiber. It's a cruciferous vegetable. From the yeah, you get every, this is outstanding. So you're you get telling so me this nutrients. glass is as much calcium as a glass of milk? As much in a cup of kale, which we put a cup of a kale cup in of there. Kale. You I get see as much all. calcium in a cup of kale as a glass of milk, wow. you get all those other nutrients. Wow. And they absorb free radicals, all these colors in these plants, and you want to get free radicals. Sure. The milk's not going to do that no, for you, no, okay? No. So, happy St. Patrick's Day. Cheers. Yeah. Stay safe. <laughs>